It's time for season number three with the NIU Huskies. Star freshman point guard Xavier Zuzak and shooting guard Josiah Hobbs helped lead us to an improved season last year, and with new additions to our team such as T.R. Radlovic and Josiah Sherrod, we're hoping that this team can perform even better and make a push for the NCAA tournament in season three. Our first game of the year was at home against Fordham, and our first points of the season would come from sophomore Dino Warren. It was already proving to be a back and forth game throughout the first half against the Rams so far, but Josiah Hobbs would come down on the fast break and give us the lead back. Along with sophomore Josiah Hobbs, junior college transfer T.R. Radlovic was showing his three-point ability as well, as this young team that we had started to build looks to be deadly from beyond the arc this year. Radlovic was on fire this half and was showing us why he came in and earned a starting spot this season, as he would bring the ball up and knock down one more shot for us right before halftime, and we'd have a 10-point lead over the Rams. Another new player to our team who started strong today was small forward Josiah Sherrod, as the threat between him and Radlovic looked to be something no one could stop this year. Year. Fordham wouldn't let that deter them though as they would fight back and eventually bring this down to a single digit game but sophomore Xavier Zuzak was putting on a master class in passing today and setting his teammates up to help keep our lead. T.R. Radlovic would have a chance to put this game away for good with this shot but would miss but Dino Warren would be there to clean up with the offensive rebound as Radlovic would make up for it with one more last second three for us and this great team effort would get us our first ever victory in a season opener. We got invited to our first ever preseason tournament and would destroy Western Kentucky in round one. Number six Arizona would be a tough matchup though as we would get beat in round number two but would still have a chance to play for third place which we would get as we beat Bradley in convincing fashion. NIU would finish their first month of season three at four and two and were taking on Big Ten opponent Northwestern who NIU surprisingly outranked on paper. This would be a huge game for our young team to win to gain some momentum heading into conference play and we seem to be firing on all cylinders to start this game against the Wildcats. The two biggest storylines for this season so far had been the play of true freshman Josiah Sherrod and our junior college transfer shooting guard T.R. Radlovic. Not to mention the strides that we had seen sophomore Josiah Dobbs take this season as well. He was our starting shooting guard last season but got his starting role taken over this year by Radlovic when he transferred in and the young shooting guard has been nothing but a true team player coming off the bench for us this year and his play complimenting Radlovic so well is one of the main reasons we have been winning so much to start the season as it was looking like that winning might continue for us here in Evanston tonight against the Wildcats. They were trying to make it come back here with less than two minutes to go in the second half, but sophomore Xavier Zuzak would knock down clutch free throws for us at the line as we would get a Big Ten victory here in season number three and would be headed into conference play with a 7-4 and four record. Through the first two months of season number three for the Huskies, sophomore center Dino Warren was leading us in points per game with 11.2, and a close second behind him was our sixth man Josiah Hobbs with 11.1 per game, who we had just talked about who had moved from the starting rotation to the bench this season. No surprise that Dino Warren also led us with 4.5 rebounds per game, and sophomore starting point guard Xavier Zuzak was averaging 4.5 assists per game. But the main storyline around the Huskies this season had remained the same, and that was the play of junior college transfer T.R. Radlovic, who has been our best all-around player this season, averaging 9 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists a game for us headed into conference play. We were on the road against Buffalo, and our leading scorer Dino Warren would go right to work for us against the Bulls. On paper, Buffalo was one of the bottom tier teams in the MAC conference so far this season, but rankings and records never tell the full story as they were already giving us trouble so far tonight. We were having an extremely hard time slowing them down from beyond the three-point line in this game, and it was costing us as they had almost increased their lead to double digits over us here in the first half. As thankfully, Xavier Zuzak would bring the ball up and get a lucky bounce and roll on this last second shot before halftime to cut our deficit down to six as we headed into the locker room. T.R. Radlovic finally started stepping up for us in the second half as he had a quiet first half with only seven points, but we still didn't seem to have an answer for Buffalo on defense as they would quickly get their lead up to double digits to start the half. We thankfully still had our secret weapon though in sophomore Josiah Hobbs who we quickly brought in off the bench this half as he started going to work for us from beyond the arc to try and close this lead Buffalo had and also was showing that he could dish the ball as well, finding an open Radlovic who would tie the game up for us. This is why it was so important that we had a solid player like Hobbs coming off the bench for us in our rotation this season as he had almost single-handedly stepped in for the struggling starting unit and took the lead back for us in the second half. From there, our offense wouldn't stop rolling and would just keep extending our lead over Buffalo tonight as we'd walk away with a nine-point victory in our conference opener. Josiah Hobbs became our leading scorer over the next month of conference play as he helped lead us to a 5-3 record in the month of January, which again marked improvement over last season's record for a second straight year. The Huskies were back at home and they were taking on the Central Michigan Chippewas, and it was really important for us that we won 
won this game against them tonight because with the way the conference standings currently looked, we could possibly finish with a worse placement in the tournament than last year, even though our final record will still be an improvement over our record from season two. Clearly, we were not the only team in our conference that seemed to get a lot better after this past off season. So we were going to need all the momentum we could gain as we were getting ready to wrap up season three and hopefully make a push to win the MAC tournament for the first time this season with Coach Husky. We would manage to get one last bucket here from Dino Warren before the first half would finish, but Central Michigan would start the second half with a bucket first and cut our lead down to only seven points. We needed our key players like freshman Josiah Sherrod to step up for us and help build our lead back this half because the Chippewas kept finding ways to keep themselves in this game with us throughout the second half so far. Our three-point specialist T.R. Radlovic would come up huge with this shot to extend it to a 10-point game, and then the rest of the team would start stepping up here for us tonight as well with more buckets as Xavier Zuzak would find Josiah Sherrod who would break the press on the fast break and throw down the dagger with a windmill dunk and what was once a close game would end up in a 20 point victory for the Huskies at home. This however would be the Huskies worst month of the season going 3-3 three and three, and we were currently sitting in 7th place of the MAC. It was time for our final game of season 3 but it would be tough for us as we were without our leading scorer Dino Warren and Tia Radlovic was currently playing through a sprained wrist as well but that wasn't going to stop him from scoring the first bucket for the Huskies tonight. This was already proven to be a back and forth game with Akron but we just couldn't seem to take the lead back after that first basket but finally would get it back for only the second time tonight from Gerard Keita. Akron was proven to be one of the more interesting teams in matchups we've had this season as even though on paper they are rated lower than us and have a worse overall record on the year they really seem to turn things around and step up their play when it came time for conference play to start as they were currently sitting ahead of us with a better conference play record this season. Even if we beat them here tonight they will still finish ahead of us in the final conference standings. So that just goes to prove that we need to take every team in this conference seriously. We needed to come out in the second half and bury the zips, but the opposite seemed to be happening for us, as they would manage to get to the free throw line and tie it up early on in the half. And not long after that, they would manage to take the lead back over us for the first time in a while tonight. Things were not looking good for us so far in the second half, and we would need more players like Josiah Hobbs to step up and keep hitting shots like this for us. Despite his sprained wrist he was playing through, TR Radlovic would make it 18 points on the night for himself with his fast break three pointer and our lead had finally gone back up to double digits over the zips thanks to Josiah Sherrod. Akron would keep fighting back though throughout the game tonight and would get it down to only a seven point deficit as now only down by four and they were surprisingly not fouling us and instead decided it was smart to leave TR Radlovic open for a three which he would knock down for us which then Akron finally decided to start intentionally fouling but it was too little too late as we'd get the five point victory in our regular season finale. That win would give us a 16 and 11 overall record in season three and would get us the fifth seed in the MAC conference tournament where we unfortunately would still be without Dino Warren for the entirety of it. It was round one of the MAC conference tournament and we were taking on the last place Eagles who finished the year with only two conference wins. But we have learned throughout this season that we cannot take any team in this conference with a bad record lightly. It was proven to be true tonight as well as we didn't have to lead a single time in the entire first half against Eastern Michigan and they would find a way to tack on one more basket before the end of the first half as we found ourselves trailing by five headed into the second. It wasn't until halfway through the second half that we finally took our first lead of the night and after that it actually started to look like we might run away with this game in the second half but like I said earlier we could not overlook any team in this tournament as Eastern Michigan would find a way to take the lead back over us with less than a minute to go. Down by three none other than the junior college transfer TR Radlovic would step up and tie this game for us and then our defense would come up with a huge stop rebound and a quick timeout which would give TR Radlovic 2.8 seconds to get down the court and hit the biggest shot of his collegiate career as the junior would win this game for us with that shot and would send us to a second round matchup against the Akron Zips. We had just won our first ever MAC tournament game in the series and we're now looking to make it two in a row against the Akron Zips. We started out strong in the first half as we took the lead early in the game and never gave it back but Akron would get one last bucket before halftime to make it a single digit deficit and we would go into halftime only up by six. With such a small lead now, we knew this game wasn't over for us as we had to keep pushing offensively to extend our lead over the zips. We would do just that as we were up by 15 and counting with just over a minute to go in the second round matchup now. Even though Akron would try their best to get back into this game and make it only a 10 point deficit for themselves, it was not enough as we'd take the second round victory over them and advance the semifinals against Kent State. If we won this game tonight against Kent State, the NIU Huskies would be in the MAC Conference Championship for the first time this series. This team has made impressive strides in only three
three seasons under Coach Husky Nation, and it looked like this young team and coach were only getting started here in the MAC as they were one half away from a chance at winning it tomorrow night. The Huskies dominated straight from the tip-off and were now up by 20 over Kent State. What was different about this team that had made them so successful from the teams the previous two seasons was that they did not let their foot off the gas at all once they were up on their opponents, and it would pay off for them in a semifinals victory tonight that would send them to the MAC Tournament Championship against a surprising opponent in Ohio who finished second to last in the regular season this year. We were in the MAC Tournament Championship and right away wanted to set the tone this game by scoring the first basket, but for playing so horribly in the regular season, Ohio was doing a good job of keeping up with us. I was shocked that we were playing the second to last place team in the Tournament Championship and was even more surprised that they were able to hang around with us as long as they did tonight as we didn't have a double digit lead until right before halftime over the Bobcats. They would come out and do their best to try to cut down that lead in the second half against us, but our offense was just too fast for them this game and they couldn't seem to keep up with it. We would keep piling on our lead over Ohio throughout the rest of the second half tonight and it was pretty obvious who would be representing the MAC in the NCAA tournament this year as we would pull out a 78 to 49 victory in the tournament championship. We would tune into the Selection Sunday show to see who our first round matchup would be and found out that it would be the fifth seeded Texas Longhorns in the East region. We were in the NCAA tournament for the first time this series and were taking on the fifth seeded Texas Longhorns. We got this game started right away with a three pointer from Josiah Sherrod, but Texas would waste no time at all getting their first bucket of the night as well. While we were undermatched against the Longhorns, we were able to hold our lead for the first three minutes tonight and would continue trading leads back and forth with Texas throughout the first half of the game. Down by two, Arnaud Dehai would hit this tough contested fadeaway to tie it back up, but the Longhorns were not going to let us stick around in this game for very much longer as they would quickly extend their lead to 10 points over us before halftime. Texas would continue knocking down wide open three point shots against our defense and would head into halftime leading us 41 to 27. This game was starting to get out of hand very quickly for us now as the Longhorns would extend their lead to 20 points over us in the second half tonight. It was super obvious and clear who the better team was on the court in this matchup as the Longhorns would end our season with an 87 to 60 victory in the first round of the tournament. They would actually make it all the way to the final four but would lose to Ohio State who would end up losing to Cincinnati in the national championship. Josiah Sherrod was named to the freshman all-conference team this season and this team looked poised for a repeat run in the tournament as we were only losing three role players to graduation who did not play for us this season. Coach Husky's job security skyrocketed after the improvement in this season and signing the 40th ranked recruiting class would only help his cause as he would bring in four-star center Aki Neverett who would be starting for us next season and three three stars in Arizona Huff, Elliot Bradshaw, and Jeffrey Britton who would all redshirt this season. We might have some competition with Buffalo though in a few seasons as they signed three four stars this year so clearly things will not be getting easier headed into season four with the Huskies.